Is the the talk right now is this whole steroids thing. We thought after the Mitchell report that it was gonna go away, but now the lid is blown off this thing again. It really has the potential to become the biggest scandal in sports in years and years. Yeah, and they have to make a statement right here with some big names, if this is true with Alex Rodriguez, Ryan Braun. Uh, something has to be done. It seems like, like you said, the Mitchell report, you, you'd figure, all right, maybe it'll slow down, it'll, it'll go away, uh, it, but it's not going anywhere. It's only getting bigger and, and bigger, I think. And they say this could all come down in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, whatever MLB wants to do in the next couple of weeks, that's great. But it's not going to happen. This is years from happening. You don't think A-Rod's, he's already lawyered up. They're all lawyered up. And if, they're, if MLB is going to go by what Tony Bosch has to say, the guy has a checkered past, and he has a notebook that has a few names in it and some numbers, unless he's got more than that, if I'm A-Rod, and after what I saw Roger Clemens just do to Ma Major League Baseball and the government, Good luck. But this one is different, I think, in that Major League Baseball is pursuing it. Because what we've seen in the past is Major League Baseball and the Players Union getting together to try to make this go away. But now Major League Baseball is pursuing it. And the way they got Bosch involved here, right, is by saying, okay, look, we'll drop this lawsuit against you if you come to us with some names. So we may not be looking at any criminal action, but if Major League Baseball wants to levy a 100-game suspension on the likes of Ryan Braun and Alex Rodriguez and Melky Cabrera and whoever else may be involved here, that could be, that could be huge. And is he just the first? Is he maybe leading the way? Is there another guy maybe providing other players with a similar type of service uh, that is out there? The game is just, it's, it's amazing. The game was so good not that long ago without all of this. And, and you look at it now and, and what a shame. But, but the thing that bothers me is, and you mentioned it, and, and I, I'm not a Bud Selig fan. Look, he's done a lot of great things for the game. But that guy looked the other way for so long, mm -hmm. and I think it keeps him up at night that the steroid era and the strike was on his watch. So now he's going all out to try and, and erase some of that. And I just think he's going to have a really hard time nailing these guys if, he, if Bosch doesn't have any more than some names in a notebook. You know, to me, part of what makes baseball great is the sanctity of the records. We all look at the records. We all look at what these guys have done in the past. And, and different eras have comprised different records and made, made them that much more important. But still, records, the home run record, which now is meaningless. It's silly, the home run record now, because we know it's tainted. All of these records and this, the, the steroids have ruined them. They've ruined the sanctity of the game. How do you go back now and make it pure again? How do you go back and take the game that, look, we all grew up watching, it's the America's pastime. How do, how do we go backwards now and try to, to change that? Well, Eric said it's going to take a long time. It's like, you know, asbestos in a building. I mean, they're going to have to take a long time to clean this thing out. And what got us here is, you know, the greed, the greed to be bigger, faster, stronger, the bigger for the next contract of $90 million. If you're Roger Clemens, who was probably a Hall of Famer before all the allegations against him, and he's at the twilight of his career, and he's like, hmm, maybe if I do this, I get another... $80 million contract. I can't, you know, can I, do I blame him? I wish he didn't do it if he did do it. Um, but, you know, you're putting money in front of these guys' faces, and, and you know, sometimes they're not always going to do the right thing. I want to talk about the greed, and I want to talk about what got us into this, or at least what I think got us into that. And we're going to continue this over on sportsedge.com. For now, we have to move on here on TV to our fitness segment, the importance of stretching after a workout. All right, now let's go back. I blame, you know, we, we talked about the greed, and there was a lot of money for these guys. We come off the strike here. Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire have their record home run chase that seemed to capture the hearts of America. For one, I hated it. Hmm. To me, it bothered me to no end. It bothered me when McGuire got the record and they stopped the game, and Sammy Sosa comes out and gives him a hug in the middle of the field. To me, it made me want to throw up. But anyway... Uh, right, we all understood <laughs> how it, yeah, we, we understood how it, it how it helped the game. But everyone, that's that's when they say anyone that, that Barry Bond said, hey, if these guys can do it, I can do it. And that's when it's seen that the steroids. I'm sure they had been done for a while, but that the steroids really got ramped up. So who could have stopped it and never stopped it? The players. The players. And 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 behind Donald Fear, who now what is he doing? Now he's representing the hockey players union. <laughs> Uh, that that bothers me. Not to say, look, he's got to he's got to look out for the financial interest of the players he represents. But to me, the players really screwed this thing up because the marginal player, who who was doing everything he could do to stay in the league, now had to do steroids well, to stay in the league. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I do disagree a bit because in 1994, when they blew the sport up, both sides, Bud Selig had every opportunity right there to say, you know what? I know you guys are all doing drugs. Everyone knows that there's, there's rumors about it. We're not coming back 
until we have a new drug policy. But he didn't want to do that because he knew that the home runs and all those other things, they wanted the popularity. So I really think it's more of an equal share of the blame than just the players. But right there, they had an opportunity, and both of them said, let's worry about that later. Well, because there was so much money. Yeah, yeah. And that's always the case. I think if one of these players who maybe it's died down a little bit for, a Mark McGuire comes out, a Sammy Sosa comes out and says, you know what, take some blame, some accountability, and, and maybe starts moving this in the other direction and talks to some of the players, and maybe this, this will change. And who knows? I, baseball was great when, you know, I, I didn't watch it. I didn't see it. I'm not this old. But Babe Ruth, you know, hit some home runs. But he's drinking beers and eating hot dogs on, on rides. Hank Aaron was a pretty good player, and from what I understand, he wasn't on any kind of uh, performance-enhancing drugs. And how about the NFL? We all love the NFL. They don't test for HGH. Everyone and their brother is supposedly doing human growth hormone. When is the NFL going to start testing? We all watch every Sunday. We see these 400-pound guys running 5040s. You don't think half these guys are doing HGH? And, and, They're not testing for and it. And if the guy on the other side of the scrimmage line is doing it, then you have to do it. Otherwise, you're out of the game. Yeah. And that's what kills me, and that's why I keep going back to the players' union. Because if, if people, if, if, the, if the players in the union were to say, listen, I don't want to put my body at risk. I don't want to end up like Lyle Alzado. We need to get this stuff out of the game. We need it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing they don't test for the HGH because it's expensive to test. But it's not like the NFL's hurting for money yeah. here. I mean, they can afford to do that testing. I, I heard from someone who does do PEDs, and they say that they do it to help their body recover. Uh, and they could see why athletes put them in their body if they're going on the, the gruel of 162 uh, game season, the travel, whether it's an NFL season where you're getting banged up, the practices. Um, so maybe there's that side of it too that maybe we don't talk about as much you know, for, for the player side. Maybe that's why they're putting this in their yeah, body. Yeah, they, they would recover a lot faster if they had bionic legs too, but it's not allowed. I mean, that's, that's the point to me. I mean, that's what Jose Canseco said in his book. He said, these are great. Everyone should do them. I'm able to recover fast. I'm going to live longer. I'm going to be healthier. But we don't know the damage. And that's, that's what all of these doctors will tell you, that it's, it's going to do some sort of damage to the body later. And so should, should, should the marginal athlete, and I say marginal, I'm talking about at that level, have to do it in order to compete? And until they test for all this stuff, yes, they will if they want to stay in the league. And we could do a whole show about this. Yeah. How great was Barry Bonds before he, his head got that big and his body got that big? He was on the way to the Hall of Fame as well. Oh, he definitely was on the way to the Hall of Fame, but maybe Barry Bonds wouldn't have been a huge star if everyone else was doing it because he couldn't hit as many home runs as Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa at the time. Sammy Sosa was not a big, huge home run hitter. He was not a great big star like he became. Rafael Palmeiro. Yeah. Another one. No home runs in Wrigley Field he played. Yeah. He no home runs. And, and you mentioned the owners are, are just as much to blame here. I mean, because, you know, the money keeps coming in, the stars are performing, they're selling the jerseys, they're selling the tickets, and, you know, everyone's just stuffing their pockets. What's going to be interesting now to see is what ends up happening with this thing. You, you think it's going to take a long time. I, I, think, uh, I think we're going to see some long suspensions, and they can't be long enough as but far as I'm concerned. But they'll all be appealed, and we won't even yeah. be worrying about it till next season probably. And then we'll be having this conversation again. Exactly. Until then, <laughs> thanks for joining us here on SportsEdge.com.